boxing just gives you so much confidence. Kids stepping into the ring to stay out of trouble. There are no barriers. We're trying to help our kids become all that they can be. If we can save kids one at a time, it's worth it. On this episode of Let's Talk Cincy, we go inside the Cincinnati Golden Gloves gym. How it's providing a safe place after school, helping them hone their boxing skills, and changing opponents into family. He told me that I'm going to be something different than a lot of kids was. Plus, a local Olympian and professional boxer training in the same gym he grew up in. Boxing saved my life. This gym saved my life. How he's trying to be an inspiration for the next generation. From WLWT, this is Let's Talk Cincy, presented by Western and Southern Financial Group. Put our financial strength behind you. Using boxing to change the lives of troubled youth. Welcome to Let's Talk Cincy. I'm Curtis Fuller. And I'm Alexis Rogers. We're here in Over the Rhine at the Cincinnati Golden Gloves Boxing Club. And let me tell you, they have this amazing program that's in partnership with USA Boxing that's changing lives. It not only helps kids develop athletic skills, but it also gives them discipline, self-esteem, and hope for better lives. It's history, it's really you walk in, you got, you know, from the old to the new boxers, you know. Buddy had, you know, been in boxing over 60 years. Started out in, oh, in about the 50s with a one little gym over in the Finley Street neighborhood house. And the YMCA had a program over there for a while, and then we'd outgrow it, and we moved into another quarters. My dad's a promoter, so everything you see here, he had his hands on, and he designed. He's always been a boxing fan. He's had posters and Muhammad Ali collection and everything. This ring that we're in was Ezra Charles' ring. And this ring was in the old Cincinnati Gardens and he fought all of his major fights that he fought in Cincinnati in this ring. We were fortunate enough to acquire it when they tore down the uh, Cincinnati Garden building. There's so much history in this building, in this neighborhood, in Cincinnati, and it's all kind of reflected in this gym. They face a lot of pressures and temptation just in the four block radius around the gym. There's a lot of shootings down here. There's a lot of open air, you know, drug activity and this place is a way to keep the kids away from that and give them goals and a sense of purpose that maybe they wouldn't get otherwise. We may lose a few, and, and then sometimes, you know, you find out you may come to the gym one day, somebody got shot or somebody got robbed. And we get that a lot too, you know, because a lot of times uh, kids, they, when they go away from the gym, strange things happen. Family is very important, and you know, ultimately, our company likes to support the development of youth. That's sort of the sweet spot of everything we do, is if we're helping educate children or teach them through athletics or some experience that can help them be disciplined and help them set goals for themselves, that, that's all good stuff. So we care about that, and our inner city boxing program is at the heart of that. The formidable years of the teenage years when they're susceptible to get into trouble. A lot of times they don't have mom and dad at home. I didn't have a dad at home. He was gone. Uh, some of the kids today though, they come from uh, families where the grandma's raising them or maybe mother's raising them. Maybe she's a one parent working it. and maybe the kid's staying with an aunt or somebody. So we don't have that two-family household like it was when I was a kid, although I didn't have a two-family household. And boxing saved me, and I figure that's what I want to do for these kids. I'm a person of faith, and we're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to serve one another. And my father's been a shining example of that, and I'm just proud to be able to continue in his legacy. And uh, we're, we're loving and serving the kids down here that need it the most. This is like a, a melting pot for them. If they stay in the gym, you know, be successful. But once they leave out them doors, it's, it's just so hard. And it's hard to come back, you know. I'll see them and say, Coach, can you, 
and I'll be back, I'll be back, I'll be back. I said, yeah, you know, you just, all you gotta do is say, okay, I'm here for you. You gotta keep the doors open. I tell every coach, every new young coach, if they gonna get their gym started, always keep your doors open because, you know, they may not see it right then, then, you know, maybe they, the second time around, they, they may get it. So I tell them that that's my main thing, keep the doors open, you know, because, you know, we, we're doing some great things. Well, I like the idea of him saying, keep the doors open. That's, yes. that's so important. Especially when they have so many kids. I mean, we've seen the kids waiting outside, excited to be in here right after school. So obviously, they're doing something right. Yeah, you know, but the message is that it, it really takes more than gloves to make a boxer. That's right. Next on Let's Talk Cincy, how Golden Gloves is training kids to step into the ring and how the program goes far beyond improving technique. You know, Curtis, what I love about boxing is it has a reach that other sports just don't, whether we're talking about troubled kids or kids coming from single parent homes or even kids who have everything, it touches them in a special place. Yeah, and what's so good about a program like this is that it teaches them how to fight, but when they're outside and they're faced with the choice of putting up their fists, they have the confidence to walk away. USA Boxing registered youth amateur team, but we also, once the kids are here, we um, have a building next door where they can do homework, get tutored. We have food donated from the Children's Hunger Alliance, so every evening, even if the kids aren't boxing, they can come and get a hot meal for free next door. It's so good. Sometimes a kid you know, he may not go home and eat right away. You know, and the food might be because it's, it's a one parent. Some of them got one parent, and you know, the parent may be working. So we provide him with food. Our other passion for our participants is to teach them life skill development so that if they aren't a boxer for their whole life, that they can be successful in life because we help them down that path. We do a speaker series where we have people from the community come to talk about job opportunities also anti-drug and anti-alcohol um, speakers. We also do workforce development. We'll help anybody in this gym get a job, or their parents. We want to help the kids in any way that we can. As a kid, like, it's a big stage of bullying going on, so boxing just gives you so much confidence. It's just like, nobody can mess with you no more. It's just like, if somebody mess with you, you know you can do something, but at the same time, when you box, your hands become a weapon, so you don't touch your body, none of that. You learn to be a leader and self-sustaining. You know, I'm gonna do it myself. Ain't nobody gonna come in here and fight, and, and nobody gonna take the punches. You're gonna take the punches, but you don't wanna get hit. You wanna hit and, and slip, and hit again and slip, and keep moving. There is definitely a moment when a kid goes from playing around to this is what he wants to do. I always know that it, it, when it happens because the coaches will start saying that kid's the truth or he's the one. My first fight was scary. Um, going into the ring was scary. My heart was beating fast. I had butterflies in my stomach. It was only a minute, so you actually had to go out there and just bang it out and just try your hardest. There are no barriers. We're trying to help our kids become all that they can be, and, and some of them are at a real disadvantage. It's gonna be really hard for some of them, but if we can make a little bit of a difference, and that's because we provide a family here for them, it's worth it. I had a father that's just, a, you know, he was just a provider. He, he wasn't like, take me to games, take me to practice every day, and made sure I was in practice, and I see a lot of them don't have it. But if it's fortunate enough that both of them, if you get both of them together, that's good, but still, even with the ones, I still try to, you know, act like I'm their dad, you know, because their dad depending on me to take care of their kid. Go, 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 go. Obviously, there's something good here because they, you know, they're beating the door down to come in. So we don't get a lot of publicity for it or press because this is work that there aren't many people out there doing. But if we can help save five kids out of our program from, you know, being in trouble or having something bad happen to them, 
how many kids are getting shot up out on the streets. I mean, if we can, if we can save kids one at a time, it's worth, it's worth it. Sometimes you may not be as, like a Rashi Warren or Adrian Brown or Rave Springs or something like that, but you may be in another different way, you know. So, you know, you may you may be a, you may become a great coach, you know. You may become a great, you know, you know, a leader, you know. So, whatever you, you know, we try to bring that out of, I think that's the that's part of this program because everybody's going to be different. Man, Coach Mike is the real deal. I mean, he's really training these kids to try to be champions. Yeah, and confidence. We talked about that at the beginning, and that's the one thing that a lot of times these kids don't have is the confidence that really is beyond the boxing ring. We're sitting down with the first U.S. boxer to make three Olympic Games in a row. I always made sure I stayed on the right path because I didn't want to get caught up out there. Half of my friends are dead or in jail. I'm one of the ones that happen to just make it this far. Rashi Warren's beginnings here at Golden Gloves and how he's inspiring the next generation to follow in his footsteps. Back to Let's Talk Sensi. You know, over the past eight years, boxers here at Golden Gloves have won over 60 championships, and some have even gone on to the Olympics. And we talked to Olympian and professional boxer Rashi Warren, whose crazy talent has taken him to fight some of the best in the world. I started when I was five years old, had my first fight when I was eight. When I was five, I just wanted to get in the ring and just fight all the kids that I felt like was my size or that was my age. But my coach, Mike Stanford, he took his time with me. You know, he started making me learn the basics with the, the jab and using my step, how to throw my punches right. Because I just wanted to just go in there and just fight like I was on the streets or something. That was something I had to challenge myself because I was always overwhelmed like ready to get in the ring, just ready to just, just let my punches go. So when I was five years old up to when I was eight, because you compete when you're eight years old, I learned all the bases. And then once it was time for me to fight, I probably went like 45 and all. I was eight years old. It was this guy from Columbus. My gloves came from what, from, from, from my wrist all the way down to my elbows, because they were so big. And my mom was complaining about the guy who I was fighting, he had a little height over me. He was like, she was like, no, he don't need to be fighting him it's too much. And my coach and my brother was telling her, just, you know, calm down, just watch him. Like, just watch when the bell rings, you're going you gonna to see what's going on. Because I was ready, you know. So as soon as the bell rang, I just came out there and just started throwing punches and bunches, just laying a punch because we ain't really had that long in the ring, just a minute every three rounds. So. I went in there and made sure I did what I had to do, and I had won my first fight. And ever since then, my mom was like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm with it. When I walked in the gym, like I said, I wanted, I was very excited to, you know, fight a lot of kids and get in there and fight. And he kept me calm, made sure I relaxed, and he told me that I'm gonna be something different than a lot of kids was, because not only that I paid attention, but I was always up under him. Like, I just was, everywhere he moved, I was moving. Like, anything he thought of doing, I made sure I was right there to see what he was doing. And I always wanted him to be a part of me in my life, no matter what I did. For me graduating, for me going to the Olympics, me turning professional, me winning the titles. Even when I wanted to play other sports, he was probably mad about it, but he was definitely there to support me when I was playing basketball. And when he walked in that basketball gym, when I was playing point guard, that's all I, it was like, like I seen my father. I started going crazy, scoring points, make sure I was doing what I had to do, you know, just let him know that I could play this sport too. Like I say, I look at him as a father. You know, this was a home away from home, you know, cause um, I came up in a rough neighborhood and it's a lot of distractions in the neighborhood like that. You know, you tend to fall into the distraction if you're not focused. And my mom and my brother made sure that I stayed on the right path and I liked the winning. So when I felt like I lost or something, I go right to the gym where I'm comfortable with and I let all my anger out. I let, you know, my frustration out or even I've had a girlfriend at the time, she probably broke my heart. 
I, my mom told me just come to the gym, take my problems out on the gym, and this became home for me. So this home away from home, I feel like my teenager years was a, it was real tough for me because I had to, you know, go to school and I had to be on the Olympic team at the time in 2004. So it was it was a lot over it was a lot over, on my head because my brothers they was um, getting incarcerated. They end up going to do 10 years at the time. Like they out now, and one of them was which is Stephen Warren. He my he my personal trainer. But at that time when he was going to get incarcerated due to 10 years. My coach said something to me. My said something to me that clicked with me. Told me that like you can make this Olympic team. When you make this Olympic team, you're gonna be the first, you're gonna be the youngest that ever made it. It's time to take advantage. It's time to become a man. And I didn't even know at that time. At 16, becoming a man, I still wanted to go, you know, do kid stuff, have fun. But like I said, I made the Olympic team, and it was like, oh wow, like like I did it. Like let's go. Like and it stuck with me for the whole time. I never even realized what I was doing when I made the team. You know, like when I, when they announced that um, I won a fight and I was on the Olympic team, you know, I just thought it was a regular fight at the time. So when then we um, got over there and then when the Olympic ceremony, that's what really just brought everything. It was just totally different just by seeing Allen Iverson, I met LeBron James. We all got the same outfit on walking in into the ceremony and for the United States. So I'm like, you know what? I ain't gonna get no autograph, but I'm gonna get a lot of pictures because I want to feel just supporting as them. It was real stressful and I was young at the time. I was only 16 making an Olympic team and I felt like when I was in the Olympics, they kind of took the fun out of, of the boxing because it was like, they had to make it seem like we had to just die for our country because it was USA versus everybody. It got me far, you know, I never looked back and be like, dad, I should have did something different because I love my life now. But it was definitely something I had to get over when I was a teenager. You know, I never really gave up on what I was doing. I always stayed focused. I always made sure I stayed on the right path, like, because I didn't want to get caught up out there. Half of my friends are dead or in jail doing time. I'm one of the ones that happened to just make it this far. I come here when I just want to, you know, see the kids work and, you know, it put a smile on my face because I see them being Come becoming who I was at the time because I know where they come from, what they doing and what they trying to get to. Yeah, they might not see it now, just like I didn't see it at the time when my coach or my brother was telling me I'm some I'm gonna be somebody, but like I said, boxing saved my life. This gym saved my life. Well, that's very impressive, but you know, they are still producing a lot of talent here. I want you to consider this. Three of their boxers won silver medals at the 2019 USA Boxing National Junior Olympics Tournament. And two of their boxers won national championships, one of them being Duke Reagan, who qualified for the 2020 US Olympic trials. And he says that Warren, in his opinion, is one of the greatest fighters of all time. Next on Let's Talk Sensi, more than a gym, Golden Glove coaches and owners share the impact the students have left on them. Plus, how the community has gotten behind their efforts. A program like the one here at Cincinnati Golden Gloves Gym takes a whole lot of blood, sweat, and tears. But you know, for the coaches and the owners, it's really about what these students become that makes it all worth the battle. I think that places like this are steps in the right direction. I mean, I think a lot of the problems that the kids run into come from feeling disconnected and like they don't have any support system from society at large, and so here's their proof that they have a support system and there are people that care about them. And I, I think places like this are part of the solution. There's a lot of companies that, when they see programs, that nobody's getting sal big salaries out of this. If you looked at our books, we're not top heavy. The city's been good to us, helping us with various properties from recreation. Uh, where our budget, we never could afford it. My company donates. We have a van that was donated to us, and, I, and people give it to these. They don't want even recognition, anonymous, because they're doing it from their heart. I go to the stores and supermarkets and stuff like that. They always, the parents, I see the parents, they always say, 
you know, keep up, when they say that, keep up the good work, I know they're watching. I know they're hearing about it. And that, that, that builds me up. There's actually one little boy who, I told him I was a lawyer, and he said, what's a lawyer? And I said, someone that helps people get out of problems. And now he tells everyone in this neighborhood that he's a lawyer. Hello, I'm gonna be a lawyer. He's like six years old. He made a little name tag for himself that says T.O. Lawyer. All the guys out on the corner are like, oh, there's our lawyer. <laughs> that was a moment where I was like, wow, this little boy is directly impacted by hearing about my career. Just having kids coming in, uh, slapping that bag and using up energy rather than getting in trouble out in the street, those are my proudest moments. And then seeing these kids go on in life and become property owners, uh, store managers, good legitimate jobs that are going to make a living for them. I would love for us to uh, have helped dozens of people get uh, an education they're interested in. Maybe it's a trade school. Maybe it's uh, some sort of uh, workforce environment that gives them an opportunity for a real career where they can make money and provide for their family. I want to create success stories. We already have a handful of them now, but I'd love to see uh, that jettison to where we have dozens and dozens of young men and women that they're not professional boxers, but they are successful in life and the seed was planted here. That would make me very proud. Everything I do and that I want to do or I meant to do over the years is not for me, it's for Cincinnati and for these kids. I'm not the type of guy I want to get patted on the back and all this stuff because, you know, I'm working for the men upstairs. I would say this is Cincinnati boxing at its finest, for sure. But I would also say that this is the downtown community at its finest as well. When my grandpa started it, his goal, it's the same goal we have today, which is this is a family. It, it's special. You know, this place is special, but uh, Buddy La Rosa is special too, and to have the vision for this is, is, is really amazing. They talk about this being a part of their family, and that's exactly what this is. This is a part of the La Rosa family, this is a part of the Golden Gloves family, and it's amazing to me how much everyone takes this to heart. This is personal, which yeah. is really the Cincinnati way. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that does it for this edition of Let's Talk Sensei. We want to hear from you. You can always email us at ltc at wlwt.com. You can also see full episodes and stories from Let's Talk Sensei by going to the menu tab of wlwt.com and clicking on Let's Talk Sensei. And we'll see you next week for another edition of Let's Talk Sensei. Stay encouraged.